Hello, everybody. I am Stacey Danemke with Nutrition Jobs, and thank you so much for joining our event today where we're going to be talking about all things websites as dietitians or healthcare professionals. I am very excited that you are here to join us. We've got a big crowd, and because this is a super interesting topic, um, I have a very special guest, and I'm super excited that you guys were able to make the time to join us uh, here today, and that is a uh, um, uh, the topic is on building out a website um, as a dietitian and why you need a website in 2023 and some really, really, really interesting information that I'm, I'm very excited to share with you. I have a very special guest, Whitney Bateson of the Dietitian Website System. Welcome, Whitney. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Stacy. And thanks everyone for joining live and hello to everyone watching the replay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Whitney, where are you? Where are you today? I am in Mexico City right now. I'm a bit of a digital nomad. I so. love it. That's why I asked because I knew um, some of us are planted at, the, at our homes and other people are out there living the dream of building an online business. She's got an uh, amazing uh, a program and a system for you that I want to share all about, but she does it all uh, from all over the world. And it's always fun to see like, where is Whitney now? And uh, she's she's got an interesting story. We'll talk about that some other time because I think that's a really good topic. But today we are going to be talking about how you can, as a dietitian or healthcare professional, build out your own website and why you want to do that. So Whitney has developed this really interesting system. Um, and I think that uh, you guys will all really benefit from this. Uh, she, she and I actually met at Fancy. I've known, I've known Whitney actually for years, and but we got to meet in person for the first time at a recent conference. And I got to watch her behind the scenes. She was new at running the booth. So it was all sort of new to her. And I watched her work with people and be such a creative problem solver, so good with tech and really good with people and the customers that came up to her. And I'm like, wow, I, I, this, this business that she has built and the person behind it is, is just so impactful and so fun to be around. I am, I am very excited to be able to introduce her to you guys uh, right now today. So um, Whitney, how did you get your start into tech or, or building out websites? How did you, tell us how you got your start. Yeah. And thank you so much, Stacey, for like the amazing uh, intro. And yeah, I had so much fun at Fancy and I still have the little tchotchke that you gave away at your oh, booth. Oh yeah, I love my it. swag. Yeah, yeah, your swag. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm a dietitian by trade. I went to school for dietetics. This was my first career. I started in school nutrition and I was the uh, dietitian for DC public schools working for a food service management company. And in that role, I was really, I was tasked with helping manage all the nutrition stuff for 100 plus schools in this very large urban school district. And even from that point, I started finding ways to leverage technology and communication and marketing uh, to expand my reach, to get better results, because I had to make sure 400 plus food service workers were following regulations and doing everything so we could pass our audits. And I found when I made my trainings more interesting and pretty and uh, fun, it had a better result. People paid attention. And fast forward, you know, almost 10 years working in school nutrition, uh, I just found that I was really, really drawn to this tech side of things. And so I made the transition. I just decided, you know, I think this is an extremely valuable resource for dietitians. I don't think there's enough tech marketing design resources out there for dietitians. I feel very strongly that we are so talented nutrition professionals, health professionals. I know not everyone on this call um, is a dietitian, but everyone in this, this health realm we're so valuable, but it can be hard for us to connect with our audience and get our message across when we're, we just don't have the right stuff to make it happen. So I started my business. I was, you know, doing different research to kind of figure out where, what kind of thing I wanted to do next. Did I want to go work for another company? Did I want to, I dabbled in video editing for a bit. So I really like dove in, swam around for a bit. Um, and the website stuff is really what what I, um, what clients were really interested in and what I really love doing. So that was five years ago now. And here we are. So, uh, brought on developers to help me designers to help me. So, um, I was self-taught in the beginning. I had taken some courses and, um, certificates about branding and all of that. 
uh, and during my master's took some marketing classes as well. So it's not a new topic for me, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been quite the ride. And uh, there's, these are just some examples of the websites that we've built or helped dietitians build. You know, uh, in the past, we were doing one-on-one -on -one dietitian websites, and that was a lot of fun helping each dietitian individually create their website. But this past year, we took everything that we knew and did in our systems and our process and put it into this dietitian website system um, group program that we can talk about a little bit at the end too. But uh, we're now uh, almost, I think, 80, 80 dietitian websites and uh, nutrition entrepreneur websites. <laughs> yeah, so this, this literally does not represent the full, the full gamut, but um, yeah. Yeah. So when you came on the scene, I remember uh, learning about what your business was and how you help other dietitians. I love to, I love to learn from other dietitians, helping other dietitians, because that's what I do, right? I, I'm a dietitian and I help other dietitians. And so love to see another dietitian come on the scene and provide something that is really, really valuable because I, I, I've watched what your system is. I've, I've learned all about what it is. Um, and you can maybe share some more about that. But I think, you know, what's interesting is that you, you learned how to do this yourself. And then you decided, Hey, like, this is something that we can all benefit from as dietitians, our whole, our whole community of dietitians. There's a lot of competition out there for our knowledge, for our voice, getting it out there and um, having, having this platform, this website, can be so valuable to really elevate a dietitian and the service that this person can provide. Um, and I know that you're going to tell, you know, I, I would love to learn a little bit more about that and have you share that with our audience. But I think you also provide just a lot of good free information. And I know that you've got a class that's coming up as well. But um, before we talk about that class, can you tell us a little bit like how the dietitian website system works like tell us a little bit more about that yeah absolutely so in a nutshell it's a six-week live group coaching program there are self-paced modules as well as group coaching calls and a community forum and the big thing is that we're helping you get your wordpress website up and so my team and i are actually doing the installation of wordpress we're connecting it to your domain we're installing page templates that we've put together. They're very customizable, but we handle all the tech stuff and give you this great foundation that you can then customize for your business. And uh, we have four weeks of, of content, but then we've, it actually used to be a four week program, but we got enough feedback that we needed just a little bit more time. So we have like two floater weeks where you don't have to be learning anything new. You're just catching up and still getting our support. Um, but the, the four weeks go from uh, identifying your ideal customer and getting clear on your branding, setting up your systems. We cover email marketing. We talk about copywriting. Uh, what is your website strategy? I have a really uh, great kind of process and exercise for mapping that out so you can really know for your specific business and the goals that you have, whether it's selling more meal plans or more packages or generating more uh, email list subscribers or maybe all of the above. How does your website strategy and what you're putting on different pages help people flow through the different parts of the site? Because uh, what we'll talk about or uh, in my masterclass I kind of talk about is some of the mistakes that, that dietitians make with their websites is just not seeing the opportunities throughout the site to sell to call our visitors to action it's not just it's not enough to put our you know hey sign up for my email list at the bottom of the home page and that's the only place that it is so we talk through all those things make sure that you're clear on that and then we have our page layouts like i mentioned that are very customizable we show you how to move those things around and then we also go over seo and launching your site and blogging so it's really everything that i know and believe needs to be in a website for it to actually be effective we cover it within the course and so you have us giving you all the tech support and guidance there answering questions that come up if you're looking for feedback on like is this lead magnet a good idea um hey you know I, i'm not really sure about should i set up this wait list for this program that i'm launching or not we can talk through it and so then by the end of the six weeks you have this beautiful website that's strategically developed you have all the back end stuff set up around it too, the email marketing, the scheduler, the SEO. 
And then, then it's there up on the web and you're not having a website that's launched in like months that you don't know how to edit. It's something that you have tutorials you can go back to and it's done in just a matter of weeks. So that's, and then you get our ongoing support and maintenance uh, on the WordPress site after that too, so. Whitney, I'm like exploding with questions. Like that, I'm so excited. It makes me like want to start a new business just so I can have a new website. Like it's so exciting. Um, anyway, I, I love what you have done. I love what you've done for our profession. And I think this is like super, super valuable. I love tech. Obviously you love tech. And so that part is all sort of fun and juicy to me. But what if, what if someone um, knows that they want to have a website but they're a little, they're, they're feeling intimidated about the process of all the tech behind the scenes. Like, it sounds like you do a lot of support, but wh what about yeah. that population of dietitians? Yeah. Well, one thing that I will say is that if you are building a business that's going to be online, tech is going to be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. It will always be a part of your life. Setting up your email scheduler, if you're setting up G Suite or whatever they call it, Google Workspace these days, you know, you're domain email, or if you're going to have a course in the future, or you're going to sell maybe an e-guide, there's always going to be that next piece of software that you are going to have to learn. But what my hope is in the course is that we take enough of the stress because WordPress, if you're building it by yourself, it is intimidating and it's confusing. And I do not believe that any dietitian should have to install their own WordPress. <laughs> Uh, that's, we do not teach that in the course because it's just, it's not a useful skill. What is a useful skill is uh, knowing how to manipulate your website, how to connect a lead magnet to your website, because my feeling, and this is just kind of the, the common feeling in the marketing space is having, for example, lots of lead magnets is a good thing. You don't want to just have one way that you're building your list. You want to have multiple ways. So um, knowing how to do some of these repeating text tasks um, is a good thing, but there is kind of this limit of how techy do you need to get, you know? And so what we do in the course is I like to say that we make WordPress as easy, if not easier to use than all those other platforms out there like Squarespace and Wix yeah. and yeah. Weebly where, you know, they're kind of like a plug and play, like give them your credit card and then pick a template and start popping in your photos and your, your images. That's, that's basically what we're doing for you. But then we're also giving you uh, a lot of coaching around it. And our templates are a lot more customizable and more movable um, and strategically designed for a nutrition business. I was going to whereas... say, yeah I, yeah, I would imagine like a lot of tech people are going like this, like, I mean, non-tech people, I should yeah. they're like, Ooh, okay, thank goodness. Someone's going right. to help me with this because I think a lot of people are swayed towards uh, you know, like uh, blog in a box, like to, you know, to look at or what, you know, business in a box where you've got something from Wix or Squarespace or whatever those ones that they're tempting. Yeah. Uh, I think I have learned over the years that that is uh, not the direction to go. But, uh, you know, what what is your thought on, on, you know, having your own website with WordPress versus using something else? What's your thought on that? Yeah, so you know, there's this different, differing kind of guidance and recommendation out there. It's like, when should you have your website? You know, if you're just getting started in business, uh, do you need to have your website? Like first, first thing. And I, I would say you should be working on getting your first one to two to, you know, however many clients you're, you're looking to scale up to, I would say work on getting those clients first with word of mouth and with referrals and you know, that's how I got my first clients is I called up, I went to my LinkedIn. I looked at every possible person that I potentially, if I were to call them, they would have some idea of who I was. <laughs> um, and I called them and I told them, I asked them, you know, Hey, can I, I'm interested to hear what you're working on. Let me tell you what I'm working on. And that's how I got my first clients. I didn't need a website for that. But then once I made all those calls, then I needed to start having something that if those people were like, Hey, yeah, I do have a few people oh, here's my website. So uh, what I would say, coming back to your question is instead of investing time thinking like, okay, I, I don't want to spend the time or money on a, a big WordPress site. Although with our course, it, it doesn't have to feel that big or overwhelming. Um, but thinking, oh, I need to have this website right away. So I'm going to go to Wix. You're going to end up spending a fair bit of your time 
battling, trying to figure it out. What's the strategy? What's the copy? What images am I going to use? Um, and then likely that website is probably not going to be as strategically set up as it could be to actually help convert people that are coming to the site. I yeah. think that's the key, right? I think so. Once you sort of get over the idea of sort of the tech end of it, or like the, you know, the, the details that, you know, don't get fixated on that. Don't ruminate on, on that little element, you know, think about what's the bigger picture. What, what, why are, why should someone even be building a website in the first place? And I'm not the one to answer that, but you, you, you probably can like share, which is the, you know, the title of our, our, pre, you know, our talk today is, yeah. you know, what are some of the big reasons? Why would someone even need to have a, an online presence? Right. Yeah. So one of the big reasons is that it is the really the most reliable way of communicating to our audience, to our visitors, to strangers, the full picture of our business. Because if you think about, you know, if you're relying on Instagram to be your, your place that you're sending people, um, you know, our followers don't usually see all of our content. They don't like a very small portion of our followers actually see our content. And so if they're seeing a testimonial here, here's your process here, here's a service here, here's some, you know, about you here. It's a very like fragmented story, whereas your website is, is that full picture and you get to control how, how you're telling that story. Because when it comes to connecting with, with people, we want them to kind of go through a process. If we start talking about ourselves right up front or start selling them right away, they're going to not really connect with us. We need to first let them know that we understand them. We get where they're coming from. They have to start feeling like, oh, okay, he or she really actually gets me and is speaking my language, which literally we should be speaking their language on our websites with our copy. Oh, um, yeah. And so we have to be doing those things in that order. There is actually an order that we should be doing those things on our websites. And so our website really allows for us to do that. Whereas just having other platforms and things like that, you're really relying on the platform to tell your story, whereas it really, you know, it should be you. Yeah. Um, and to add on to that too, you know, your website really can be your salesperson. And I actually sent email about this to my email list, like a couple, um, like last week, I think, because you know, when we think about all the different roles in our business and, you know, we could hire an accountant and a bookkeeper and all of that, you know, a salesperson, man, wouldn't that be awesome if we could all hire a salesperson, <laughs> but most of us, you know, are not at that point. It's a lot of roles to, to manage and all of that. But if we were to be writing the job description of a salesperson, we'd probably want them to be educating people about what are, what it's like to work with us and what's our process. We want them to be answering questions so that when people get on a call with us, they have some of their questions answered. We'd want them to be qualifying leads. In other words, say for example, you're an anti, um, like anti diet or no diet dietitian. You don't want to be having people come on calls with you and being like, yeah, so I just want to lose weight. And you know, what diet am I looking for? Like, that's not a good experience for anyone. Uh, so you're, you'd be looking for your salesperson to be doing that or getting calls on your calendar booked out and gathering information up front about what are the person's goals? What are their pain points? So that when you get on that sales call, you're prepared to actually have a productive call and speak to all those issues. Well, your website is that your website can do all of those things that I just mentioned. So uh, it's really going to save you a lot of time with not having to answer questions that are answered on the website. And it's just going to do a lot of that selling for you. And some people also will rely on um, listings like health profs, or maybe they'll rely on referrals from doctors, offices and whatnot, which all of those things are great marketing tactics, but they shouldn't be like the one tool that you rely on in your toolbox. Because you know, you talk about like a physician, they're going to my, a million miles a minute. They're okay. Here's your card. Maybe they've gave, you know, your card to their, their patient, but don't expect that physician to be selling you, you know, and saying like, Oh, wow. Well, yeah. She's going to cover all these things. She's really great. Her process is this. No, you're going to have to do that. But what's going to happen is that patient's going to take your card. They're going to go to your website. They're going to learn more. And then they're going to get on a call. 
So we just need to be doing a little bit more kind of education and nurturing and all that. And our website is really one of those, those key pieces for doing that. I think that's genius. I hadn't even thought about the idea that your website serves as the salesperson role. And I, you know, I think that that is genius. Um, I, I'm, you know, again, thinking of a thousand questions that come up from this, it's, um, I find it fascinating. And I think, you know, from the perspective of um, our audience, you know, like there's a lot of a lot of different types of job titles uh, that you hold, whether they're full time titles or part time titles or side gig, whatever it might be that that this could really apply to. So, you know, whether you're like a, a lactation consultant trying to get um, clients or you are a um, uh, a, a plant-based dietitian and trying to sell meal plans, or I mean, I'm sure there's a, a bunch of different roles. Whitney, what, what are been some of the um, interesting ones? I'm looking just here on our slide, just all these other websites that people have done. They're all in so many different, like food, freedom, fertility. <laughs> like there's, you know, right. like there's so many different, like maybe what, what are some some interesting ones that you've come across or even some uh, some ones that are more common that could mm -hmm. give us some ideas like how we can see ourselves with a new website. Right. So, um, yeah, we've had dietitians who are mainly focusing on their, their podcast, but maybe they're selling some, uh, consulting services or some courses on the side. Uh, so we have like the freelance dietitian and her podcast, uh, we have writers. So copywriters, that's, that's okay. another area right. that a lot of dietitians focus on. We've had dietitians that are serving multiple audiences. So they're both looking for brand partnerships and media partnerships, but then they also do see patients and clients um, as well. Uh, and yeah, in terms of like the different areas, we have heart health in the middle here, we have welding wellness where Heather really focuses on men who are at risk of a heart attack or recovering from heart disease or treating heart disease. You don't really recover from it, but uh, you can certainly do some things to, to make it better for you. So, uh, she targets men. And I think that's also an interesting thing to consider is, uh, we need to really tailor our, our copy and our branding to actually speak to our customers. And mm -hmm. it can be tough to kind of just outwardly think about that, you know, oh, okay. I want to come up with the colors for my website. Let me go on Pinterest and look at some, you know, colors or whatnot. And, uh, without really like giving the additional thought behind it. And so uh, we really help our students go through a process to make sure that they're really coming up with the right, the right branding and the right copy for their, their customers. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think we've also, we've also had people that are like B2B, so business to business. So um, we had one group, uh, it was two women that came through and they um, have a nonprofit for school food and farm to school. So um, this, this system and our layouts worked for them as well. Um, we have worked with other dietitians who uh, consult for school food service and uh, manufacturers. And yeah. That's yeah, a lot. So I love those. Yeah. Those are super interesting. So I yeah. know that your your system, you, you know, you take care of sort of like a copy for, for, you know, being the salesperson for it. And I think you also do some help with SEO is right. So obviously you can get referrals from, from, you know, friends for your patients or uh, um, a physician's office or the hospital or a clinic or something. But I think also considering SEO, uh, maybe people can find you organically is, yeah, so I think you take into consideration SEO as well. Yes. Yeah. And so it's engine you know, sorry for, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. SEO search engine optimization, which, you know, nine times out of 10, we're talking about Google. Yes, there is Bing there's Yahoo or whatever, you know, but mainly focusing and talking about showing up in Google and showing up, um, hopefully on the first page and one of those top, you know, uh, search results for what your customers and ideal clients are actually searching for, whether they're searching for services like you or whether they are typing a question to Google and hoping to get a good answer. And we're hoping that your website is the one that actually shows up as the search result answering that question. So yeah. we, we focus on helping you identify the keywords for your main pages on your website. So those are going to be more competitive um, keywords, but they're also going to have a lot more volume but they are really important to be, have identified and we still have opportunity to identify a few different kinds of mixes and matches for the different pages on your site. 
And then the more long tail, which is what most people focus on for blogging. So having some blog posts and you know, I know blogging, especially when you are juggling everything in your business and you're wearing all those different hats, um, it can feel very overwhelming. And so I always want people to know and, and see that you don't have to be putting out a blog every week. You don't have to have this goal of having it be a passive income source, looking for, you know, ad revenue or anything like that. But just the example that I gave, if your client is searching in Google for a question that you already get asked so often by other clients, put it into, you know, just, I mean, there's so many different ways. I love Otter as a tool, otter.ai. Um, just do a voice memo on your phone into Otter. You can do it for free and just talk through, okay, my client asked me this, this is how I would answer it. Make that into a blog post and stick that up there and have that on your site. Because even having some of this content onto your site, it doesn't have to be you know, dozens and dozens, dozens of blog posts, but it's doing that trick of bringing more traffic to your site. It's letting Google know that, Hey, there's some interesting content on the site because Google can only work with what you give it. And so if you only give it a few pages, it's kind of like, Oh, I'm not really sure if this is really a valuable site. Cause I don't know if there's enough information on here. So the more, the more you give it, the, the better results you, you get. And I'm very oversimplifying it here, but Oh, no, that was I think <laughs> that little pearl. I, I like just doing that. I mean, the, um, you know, conceptualizing like how how you could run your business and get more, you know, more clients. And um, I think that that really helps plant in our heads like how how that actually works. So that's that's really helpful. Uh, another question yeah. I had was, um, let's say um, uh, you have like so. I guess uh, you've you've taught us about like why we need a website. Like what. What are some reasons like or misconceptions about having a website as a dietitian? Yeah. Um, so I talked a little bit about, you know, this, this idea that, well, we can rely on referrals and that that's, that's good enough. We don't need a website, but like we talked about uh, referrals can be uneven. They still, if, even if you have a referral nine times out of 10, if I'm sending someone to someone, I would love to be able to link to their website you know, when I, I say, Hey, you know, go check out this person. It just legitimizes things. So, um, the idea that not having a website is, is okay. Um, if you're trying to grow your business and make things easier on yourself, then, then a website's really important. Um, I think also just that misconception of that, well, just get it up there, you know, just, you don't need to really invest a lot of time and money. You just need to have the website up there. No, it's going to be better if you do take the time and energy to, um, to put it up there the right way. Yeah. Um, and I think another thing that, and this kind of goes more along the lines of like the email and the list building and, and all of that. Um, basically this idea that, uh, people I've heard dietitians say they don't want to get subscribers to their email list because they don't want to have to be putting out a newsletter mm -hmm. and they don't want to have to be emailing people. And it's kind of the same thing for blogging too. I I've heard that idea that, you know, I don't really plan on blogging a whole lot. I don't really know what I would write about. So I don't really want to have a blog. And I just say, just start it. You don't need to be putting out a ton of content, but just get it started. Um, the same, you know, the blogs definitely just like get the blog on there and then have a few and just keep working on it. Maybe in the future, you'll hire a VA that can help you. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so then when it comes to the email list building, it's the same kind of idea that your email list is one of the most, if not, and you can let me know how, how you feel about this for your own business, but it's one of the most valuable assets that you can have in your business is your email list. Because, you know, when you talk about wanting consistency, I'm sure many of you on, on the phone are wanting more consistency in your business. You, you know, instead of having like, oh, we've got like 10 discovery calls and then it's crickets <laughs> for three weeks, you know, that's, Right. You want a consistent business. You want a consistent system. You want it all sort of to play out and in right. a nice, organized, tidy little little way that we sort of think about it. So I know it's not always tidy, but I think yeah. leaving it and, and that it can work that way because you have a system set up to make it work that way is the direction yeah. you can go. Yeah. Yeah. And having an email list allows you to have that that consistency because you control that list. It's not like Instagram where Instagram will decide mm -hmm. if it feels like showing your reel to anyone or no one today, 
your email list is your list. Your email will be delivered to 100% of the people that you send that email to. Now, they may not all, all open it. You can work on doing better with subject lines and all of that. That's why it is good to be sending emails somewhat frequently because people don't always open emails and all of that. And it's totally fine that you don't, no one gets 100% open rate. Um, so that that's totally fine. And it you don't need to be kind of reinventing the wheel or coming up with these just amazing, you know, <laughs> ahas for your email list every week. Uh, a lot of times what I do is I just take something that has already been on social media and I put that into the email. I kind of create an email from that or vice versa. If, you know, I create a great email, then I um, co-opt that into some social posts. That blog post that you wrote for answering client question, that can be do a little like snippet intro of that and then tell people that, um, you know, hey, I wrote this blog post, check it out. So your email list is a way for you to start a relationship with people that come to your website that are not ready to buy. Because this is this other misconception that, you know, everyone that lands on your website, they're either going to book a call or they're going to leave. Well, there is this middle option that they're interested, but they're just not ready yet. And they need more information. They need more time. And if you have a lead magnet, a really valuable lead magnet, they're going to put their email address in there. And then it's up to you to just keep that conversation going and nurture them a little bit more. And then when it comes time for you to sell to them a little bit and let them know how you can help them because you've already been giving them a lot of great value, they're going to be more open to that. And you can share your services. You can let them know about flash sale. You can tell them about different products that you're maybe an affiliate for. So there's so many opportunities. So I think it's a lost opportunity to not be building your list from your website and your website, since it's already getting shown in Google and it's working that way, it's just this 24 seven resource that is just building your business behind the scenes without you having to, you know, find each individual lead yourself. Yeah. So, I like that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Whitney, I, I just realized we've been, you've, I've, I've had so many questions for you that we're coming up to the end of our, our chunk of time. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, you could just like go on about this. I can tell like everyone's giving me like little uh, emojis as well. Like this is really, really beneficial and helpful. And so I love hearing about your system, your website system. I, um, I am also, I just, I love all the business strategies that you gave. Like that was all bonus. I love hearing all your business strategies, but I, the other thing I want to let people know is that you've got an upcoming class that people can join. And, yes. uh, let me just show that, um, you want to tell us a little bit about that. And I've got a link to yeah. it, um, in the chat. That's my affiliate link. That's a, a link to it. The, the class is free, but maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, like we were talking about on, you know, today, there are some mistakes that diet dish dietitians make with their websites. Uh, yes, you need a website, but only if it's put together strategically so it can get you more clients. But unfortunately, there's a lot of dietitians out there that just have websites sitting there and they're just kind of costing them frustration and aggravation and time and money. And um, I really want to show you in this masterclass how you can turn your website into that client generating machine and really make it start working for you, have it be that salesperson, have it be that, that email list building uh, system that, that we all want and need. Um, so you'll learn the five secrets that I have. I have some great examples and um, just stories that really kind of bring it home. So uh, we've done this masterclass before and it's always just such a great feedback from the audience that they really got a lot out of it. Um, and when you attend live, you get my landing page copy template free. And so basically a landing page is uh, a long form page typically that you'll have up on a website. You could have it on your own website. You could be in MailChimp or whatever email provider you have or um, Kajabi or, you know, but basically it's this page that Ideally, we're looking for people to get as much information as possible, take them through this journey so that then they will take an action at the end. Uh, but there is a process and order in which we should do things. And it can sometimes be a little challenging to know what order to do things and how much copy should I include and what copy goes where. So this is a step-by-step -step template. It's very detailed. I give you each section that you should include. 
um, give you some prompts and ideas of what content to include. And then you can go and use this and plug it into any place that you're building a landing page and use it over and over and over again. So that is free for anyone who attends live with me. And yeah, it's coming up in February. So only a few weeks away. Two and classes. yeah, I see that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to join one. I hope you guys join me too. <laughs> this, yeah. is great. this is great. Oh, Whitney, yeah. thank you so much for all of this. I know we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Somebody asked, um, can you repeat what free platform website it was to add to the website? I think maybe they're referring to the transcription or, or oh, well, um, there's that question it? too, yeah, but yeah, right. I think they may, um, well, maybe it was the otter.ai. Yeah. So that yeah. she just put that into the chat. And I was thinking maybe the platform, the base of what your website should be is, is the WordPress, right? right? That's, and that, that is free, but you have like, you know, stuff to add on Posting to and all of that. Not yeah. That free, but yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Um, okay. Another question we have is about with hosting third-party plugins and the themes They can be pricey. Um, does this all have to happen in, in WordPress or can it be done in Squarespace? Yeah, so that's a great question. So the reason that I recommend people move over from these Wix and Squarespace and all of that over to WordPress is that the SEO generally we have found, um, and there's varying articles that will argue both sides and all of that. But personally, every time that we've moved a client site over from Squarespace to WordPress, they've seen a jump in traffic. So I, I can't really, uh, <laughs> you know, Kind of argue with with the data and the, and it's a sustained jump it's not just like oh you know google was just notified and you know that site had been live and now they're seeing a lot more a lot more traffic so um a number one is the seo and again even if you are not having a goal of passive income or ads or anything like that getting just that nice steady flow of traffic of your ideal customers to your website when they're typing into google is, is just so great for your business to grow without you having to be trying so hard all the time. Yeah. Um, the other reason is that these platforms do have limitations. So if you ever want to put recipes on your website, for example, there's a great plugin that's for free on WordPress that cut, that uh, formats the, blog, the recipe very nicely, has a, like a PDF, print a PDF button. It's uh, marked up for Google correctly. So Google knows, knows it's a recipe. If you've ever searched for recipes, you know, the search results look different for recipes in Google than they do for just typical pages. Um, so those are things that you can't do in these other platforms that you can do on WordPress. And with our course, you do get two, uh, two months of hosting and maintenance from us for free. Oh. And then we do give you, um, depending on which theme you want to use, we, we offer both Divi and Elementor as page builders in the course. Um, you'll get Divi for free lifetime access, so you don't have to pay for that. Um, we give you a really great deal on hosting. Um, I think too much detail for, for this course or for this you know talk today, but um, you get great hosting at a very reasonable price from us, and then we're maintaining your site. Uh, I don't think there's any plugins that you need to pay for if you go through our program. So um, I think it's it's also just knowing what you need and what you don't need. And that's the guidance that we can give you through the course, yeah. because there are a lot of plugins out there, um, to Jen's point, that you do you know, need to buy, but I don't think you, well, that are paid, they're not free, but I don't think you need all of them, especially when you're just getting started. And sometimes people can add too many plugins to their sites. Um, so yeah, the, the theme, piece and the hosting piece and the plugin piece, we really try and map that all out for you, keep the, the costs low. Um, and then you have that flexibility for your site to grow and evolve as your business grows. You're not going to have that cap on it that you would have on some of these other platforms where, you know, even show it on their, I think you have to get like their highest, highest, highest tier plan to start installing any plugins that you want. Otherwise on their medium plan, you know, they, they say you get a WordPress blog, but you can only put the plugins on there that they allow you to have. There That's are guardrails. Yeah. Uh, I researched that one and I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for doing that work for us. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, yeah. Whitney is, she's a genius. She's yeah. super easy to work with, but she knows her stuff and is, has just created this great uh, system that I hope you guys can check out, but do take advantage of this free masterclass webinar that she's giving. I'll be in one of them. 
So hopefully I'll see you in there. The link is, uh, it's going to be wherever you're, wherever you're, you're watching this, it's going to be um, down there someplace for you to be able to click over to and sign up for Whitney. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, thanks everyone for your questions and for tuning in today. And again, for those who are watching the replay, this was a lot of fun. And yeah, I do hope that I see many of you in the masterclass. Uh, we are offering it two times and two days. So hopefully you can find time your schedule to attend. And yeah, this is a topic I just, I love talking no, uh, with dietitians about. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much, Whitney. And thank you to everybody else.